So when you guys hear the name From Software, you probably think of such long-running franchises as the Soul Series, or maybe Kingsfield, or even Armored Core. But today we're going to be looking at the first installment of probably one of their lesser-known franchises, known as Echo Knight. Let's go ahead and get started. find ourselves in the burnt-out husk of our father's home, where the police have been kind enough to let us look around because we are a member of the family. But they do warn us about trying not to touch anything as, well, they are still investigating a possible crime scene here. Now, we don't know too much about the main character's father. All we can gather is it's a little bit from the police officer here, where apparently our father might have been an artist, though... Oddly enough, he didn't really have any paintbrushes or canvases or, well, any artist tools laying around. Still, we are finally able to move about freely. And for the most part, the controls for Echo Knight are pretty simplistic. I mean, this was a fairly early PS1 title. We can move, you know, with standard tank controls and look up and down with the shoulder buttons. And we will be needing to do that because... Well, we are going to have to find items and different things to investigate. Now, if we have something we can investigate, it'll start to pulsate and make our crosshair change. And we can pretty much, you know, do a basic investigation. 
such as we can find out this is a burnt chair. We can also pick up said objects, though well, we should probably respect the wishes of the police officer and not mess around too much here. Still, I mean, we might as well do a, a little bit of investigating, I suppose. There, Maybe we can figure out what might have started this fire, such as this rickety old fireplace here. That, I guess that could have started a fire. Maybe not this big of a fire, though, because it seems like this entire room was just seriously engulfed. And I, I get the feeling that it probably wasn't started by this broken lantern, either. I guess maybe these are red herrings to throw off these, uh, these smart and hardy policemen here. He is, he's a, he's a man of mystery, our father is. But we'll leave the police officer to, to do his guarding duties here and check out the rest of the house. Now, it is going to be important to always key, keep a keen eye open for items. There's going to be plenty of them laying about, and they all are going to be super necessary to complete the game, such as... It's a very hard to spot item here amongst the rubble. And what it is, is a winding key. Possibly for some type of wind-up toy, or more than likely for a clock. We also see here that we have a easily readily accessible inventory. We have that small key that our father sent us with that mysterious letter, and that winding key we just picked up. Get a feeling we're probably going to be using those pretty soon. Because as you can imagine, the house really isn't at large. Not only is it not large, but I get the feeling that even before the fire, it was probably not the most luxurious place. It's hard to imagine that anybody would have slept in such a Spartan environment, but... Well, we don't really know too much about the father. Apparently, though, he was very much into uh, grandfather clocks for some reason, even if they're not working. And even if... Well, I kind of want to investigate this a little bit more, but... Yeah, it is currently locked, but... Well, coincidentally, we just happen to have a special key that our father sent us, so... Go ahead and use that. And check and see if there isn't more to this whole grandfather clock. Now, while it seems like we can highlight and maybe interact with both the minute and the hour hand, it doesn't really seem like there's any type of puzzle connected with those. Instead, we want to focus on that small hole here because we can use that winding key we just found to wind up the clock. And strangely enough, that Clock was a part of some deeper mechanism, which blocked off a hidden passageway in our father's bedroom. Now we might as well go ahead and investigate. That's part of the reason why we're here, right? And we find a mysterious book.
And indeed, that was a fairly mysterious book, as it has seemingly transported us onto a moving train, probably out in the middle of nowhere. I can only assume, though, that we must have been sent here for a reason, so maybe we can start asking around and gather a bit of information. Maybe we can figure out where we are. Sadly, the conductor here isn't going to be forthcoming with any helpful information. It's probably more concerned with our safety and the safety of the train. Ah, here we go. Maybe this, uh, this gentleman here will help us out. Nope, he doesn't seem to be of any assistance either. In fact, he seems pretty perturbed that we are even interrupting his evening with uh, trying to talk to him. I guess we'll just leave him to his deep thoughts and... Well, it doesn't actually seem like there's anything else in this particular train car that might help us out to figure out what we're doing here, so... Let's just see what the other train cars hold. You can probably imagine no one is standing out in the, the middle of the cars. Just a lovely rhythmic uh, wheel motion. Ah, maybe this, uh, this older gentleman here will, will be able to help us. Seems he's on possibly a trip with his young granddaughter. While he is initially short with us, it's mostly because we are probably interrupting his vacation with bizarre questions. He does seem to have this feeling that we've met before, but I don't get the impression that uh, we've met him. It's probably just a weird feeling of deja vu. Also, we can talk to the granddaughter here, but... As you can imagine, she doesn't really have anything helpful to say. It's just, I guess my assumption was right, and that they are heading out on a trip, but it seems she's feeling a little bit homesick, and she probably doesn't really want to be out right now. And I definitely share that feeling right now. I'm sure our player character here would rather have just stayed home rather than investigating his father's mysterious past. And with that, we have quite literally reached a dead end on the train. We've kind of run out of options here. I guess we could maybe go talk to the conductor a little bit more. I mean, he is running the train, so I'm, I'm sure if we poke and prod him a little bit, we can probably get some helpful information. I guess that young man probably wanted, uh, wanted a little change of scenery. Or maybe it was for some other more sinister reason. It seems that something bad has happened to the conductor here. And he mentions that someone has taken his keys get a strong feeling that I know who that might be. But we can't really revive the conductor at this point. I, I assume he's only knocked out, not dead, but did manage to drop this super helpful crank, which we're going to go ahead and pocket. And if my suspicions are correct, that young man that we saw pass by us not only took the key, but probably has some more sinister urges that are forcing him back into this back cabin. We are going to have to find an alternate means to get into this last train car, because he has locked it behind him, but there is a helpful ladder right here. So 
So you can imagine, though, we are going to have to be a little bit careful, though. We are on a speedily moving train. Yeah, it looks like there is a hatchway up here at the top, but we can't open it with our bare hands, but that is why I did make sure to pick up that crank, because that is exactly what we need to open up the hatch. So, through some bizarre machination, we've been given privy to a vision of our father from the past, locked in what appeared to be a pretty deadly standoff with that older gentleman. While there are probably a million questions running through our character's mind right now, his primary concern is probably the well-being of his father after having been shot in the gut. Good news is that while that older gentleman did come running through here, he did manage to leave the door here unlocked. And that means we can continue to give chase and hopefully stop our father from being killed. Also, as you can imagine, the young girl here is, well, pretty much at a loss for words considering that she was just used as something of a human shield, but we'll worry about that more later. Let's go ahead and check on our father.
So it seems this book gave us a very, very dark picture of our father as he was hunting down a seemingly possessed older man named William Rockwell. And, well, we haven't shown, I haven't shown it off just yet, but while we can use our quick inventory here, we can also open up our primary inventory, which gives us an indication of some kind of useless information, but more importantly, it does allow us access to a further inventory, which allows us to give a read of this red book. Now you can pause this at your own leisure, but for the most part, this goes into just well, our father's lifelong struggle against this mysterious William, William Rockwell and an attempt to get away that mysterious red stone. And it seems all of this managed to happen aboard this cursed journey on the steamship Orpheus. Now, at the end of this, uh, this red book here, you do get a newspaper article which kind of vaguely outlines the fact that the Orpheus was something akin to the Flying Dutchman and that it just mysteriously disappeared out on the open waters and no one really knows what might have happened to it. I get a feeling though that our father might have known a little bit more about just what happened to this Orpheus. And it probably has something to do with those mysterious stones. Now, while we could go back and tell the police officer all of this, I, I doubt he'll be too understanding, so might as well go ahead and press on forward, see what else lies in store behind this mysterious hidden passageway. And it's a pretty small room. Part of me wants to say that maybe the character's father was into chess, but... Instead, it looks like he was using this chessboard as maybe something of a reference for a painting he was doing. Well, in actuality, this is probably our first real puzzle of the game. We want to situate the room in such a way that it mirrors the painting here. And it's Pretty simple to do all around. We just have to move this male statue here in front of the female bust. And that should relatively match up to what's on the painting. As you can imagine, we, we move pretty slowly considering these statues are probably made of solid marble. And I guess we need to move them just a little bit closer and that should be good. Who are you? What are you doing here? Come with me. You shall not leave. You mustn't go outside of this room. Is that understood? And with that sudden change of environment and 
what appeared to be a ghost talking to us. I, I feel like this is probably a good stopping point for our first video. Hopefully you'll join me next time, and we'll see what's in store for us on the Orpheus.